This is Bob, and Bob is infected with a parasite. Bob's favorite activities include infecting people with his disgusting disease and just generally being a piece of subhuman garbage. In this video, we're going to be surviving 100 days in the parasite apocalypse. The parasites will start off small, look at this cute little guy, and then they will turn into abominable monstrosities. And it's my job to try and survive as best I can and hopefully slow the progress of the infection. Welcome to 100 days in the parasite apocalypse. Now before we begin, I would just like to mention that this mod pack is difficult, and it gave me a lot of trouble. And by trouble, I of course mean, yes, daddy, please give me more. And so here we are creating our third world, hoping that this one's gonna go better than the last two. Nice and easy spawn, please. Maybe I could be a newborn son to a baron, or some kind of duke or arch countess. Sadly, no, I was not spawned into some Victorian royal family, but there were at least dogs nearby. Knowing I didn't have long before some monsters would show up, I set myself to attacking this tree. After spending what felt like three hours hammering my knuckles against the bark of this tree, I decided not to collect the wood by my own free will. There we go. Too easy. Whoa! Having just lost almost half my health and having not profited any wood from that transaction, I was in high spirits and certainly felt happy and ready to continue. Also, the spider happened to be following me, but I was able to give him the slip. Sifting my hands through the soft ground, I decided to gather up some gravel and hopefully end up with some flint. Two flint to my name and a newfound hatred for trees, I decided to kill this guy. There we go. Now, in order to help me with the parasites and also to keep things interesting, I made a couple of changes to the base Minecraft routine. After making my crafting table, I made these blank patterns, a stencil table, a tool station, and uh, another one. I can't remember the last one's name. We'll just call him Tim the Table for now. Look, it's not that important, okay? The only thing you really need to know is that this is going to allow me to make Minecraft tools that gain XP as I use them and also become slightly stronger as they level up. The mod pack is called Tinker's Tools, by the way, but I will warn you, you need a degree in mechanical engineering in order to be able to play it. My brown sticky tools now created, I was able to move on to the Stone Age. I was in a big hurry to gather up as many tools as I could before nightfall, when the parasites and other things would start spawning. With our newfound stone, we were able to make a stone pickaxe head and add it to our turd pickaxe, crafting a stone pickaxe. I started gathering up as much stone as I could because I knew I would be building a shelter soon and it seemed like a good idea. After a little bit of experimentation, I actually found out that flint tools are even better than stone. So I nabbed myself a flint axe and ethically euthanized some of the local animal population. Genocide now accomplished, I started getting the rumblies in my tummy, and also noticed that the sun was going away. Knowing that I would need some light for the coming darkness, I decided to nab up some coal that I could use for torches. Following that, I elected to stay at a wonderful bed and breakfast. Quickly though, I started to feel a little bored and very claustrophobic. So I started mining around to see if there would potentially be any cheeky bits of iron poking out. We didn't get very lucky on the iron, but we were able to make a crafting station, so we cooked ourselves up a couple of sloppy joes. Hearing that there was a lot of nonsense going on outside, I decided to take a quick peek with the use of a fence. And indeed, it would seem that we've been raided by spiders. But a good friend from university used to tell me, we are not here to fornicate with arachnids. Therefore, I cleverly built a little spot where I could slice them from a distance without getting murdered. After a short period of time though, I suddenly heard this horrible sound. Now explained in simple terms, that sound is a monster turning into a primitive parasite. Basically, the parasite infection is all around us at all times, and every monster has a chance to get infected. Could be a cow, could be a spider, could be anyone really. I mean, look at this guy and tell me he's not infected with something. Knowing that certain death almost certainly waited for me outside, like a newlywed couple, I thought about using the back door. But sadly, there were monsters there too, so I had a tough decision to make. Either I invite these monsters in and fight my way out, or I break down one of the exits and try and escape. Seeing the shadows of some not-too-nice-looking fellows, I decided to go with option B. You know like a coward. I was chased by a few zombies, but I was able to take care of them. Thankfully, the parasites had decided to stay back for a cup of tea. And after a little bit of stabby stab, I was on my way. However, before leaving, I decided to grab as much gravel as I could. You never know when you're gonna need this. I also managed to convince a sheep to relinquish his wool. Now, since we don't have food in plentiful supply, I figured it'd be a good idea if we stop and grab some from these guys. Is that? No, no. Okay. Carefully now. 
Stay back. Be gone. Meat sandwich. Oh, thank God. <sighs> Those guys could kill me in a single hit. I'm fairly certain. I don't have any armor yet. A couple of happy meals later, we managed to level up our axe. My flint and hatchet leveled up. Good. And what that means is that it'll do slightly more damage, and it'll dig a tiny bit faster. Every little bit helps. Clambering my sweaty body over the mountainous terrain, I eventually arrived to a location that would soon house my base. The only problem I was having was deciding exactly where to put it. Maybe we set up a base over there. That looks like a kind, cool little spot. Ow. I decided to quickly throw together a little bridge to get back and forth. The last thing I wanted was to be chased by some kind of parasite and have no way back across. And as I was gingerly blocking my way across, I then spotted a little bit of iron. This is fantastic, because the number one thing we need right now is some armor. Feeling a bit giddy, I decided to look inside the cave, in case there was some extra iron. But upon finding out that this cave was infested with parasites, I was thinking maybe it would be better we go somewhere else. Over here looks good. <laughs> Where the parasite is not. The second cave happened to be filled with parasites as well, but this one was only a small boy. However, there were also some spiders beneath me. Eventually, the spider had walked away, so I decided that that little worm is the kind of challenge that I'm ready for. However, after I jumped down, I ran into a second parasite, and this one had seen me. Ow. Oh, he saw me. Oh my god, get out of the water. Run, run. Nope. Uh, okay, he's gone. Whew. My escape from those hostile homies had left me in the middle of a darkwood forest. With these darkwood trees being as large as they are, I was quite keen to set up a base near here, as we would have an immediate supply of a lot of wood. But when I spied that little island down there, I thought maybe it'd be a good idea to build underwater. You see, most of the parasites live on the land, and as far as I'm aware, none live in the water. So it could be an idea, at least for the first few days, to set up a little safety bunker under the water. Now, getting started on my mansion of moisture wasn't too hard. All I had to do was basically throw a door down and I was able to breathe, and then after that just build my little lobster shell of security. It didn't take long, and eventually we had a little home. Behold! My home! <laughs> it ain't much, but it's home. <laughs> it really ain't much. Hello, oh, Squiddy. Are we done? I'm your new neighbor. What a welcoming neighborhood. It's beautiful. Oh, we've got a leak. After a few plumbing debacles, I decided it'd be a good idea to start mining downwards, as we need to solve our nudity problem as quickly as possible. Ooh, hello. We also had absolutely nothing better to do as I was lacking one wool to make a bed. Decided to quickly cook up my iron and throw together a nifty little chest plate. As you see, I had been assaulted by arachnids once more. As I was under the water, they weren't able to get down to me, but they were able to bob lifelessly above me, which was quite intimidating, and I wasn't too impressed. Once I had dealt with the Homeowners Association, I then set myself to gathering the resources I needed, namely wood for building and iron for protecting my giblets. Thanks to the iron I found, I was able to make myself a tinfoil helmet to avoid the government stealing my grilled cheese recipes, and afterwards I used a stabby stick to kill some of the spiders that were floating around nearby. However, this procedure did not go as planned. Oh, boy! That was a lot of health. I'm very glad I, I made that helmet. My near-death encounter encouraged me further to finish off my armor set, so after dealing with the homeowner association again, I headed back down and finished off my outfit. As we were in a desperate need for food, I figured fishing might be the best way to get some, so I quickly headed to the shore to show some fish what opposable thumbs and a frontal cortex can do. A few hours later, I had in my inventory a couple of delicious aquatic subspecies. I'll show you subspecies! However, with just the basic fishing rod, it took an incredibly long time to only get those two fish. So I figure tomorrow during the daylight hours we'll go exploring and hopefully find a better source of food. As I still didn't have a bed, I made my way back into the mine to try and find a little bit more iron for us, and maybe get a bit deeper in case we wanted to start looking for diamonds as well. Didn't get too lucky on the iron or diamonds front, but we did happen to find a small lava pool. 
And now this is actually an incredibly lucky find, for you see, as the parasites get stronger, the only thing that's going to stop them evolving is good old fashioned fire. And so having a lava bucket on hand is going to be the strongest weapon we could possibly have against some of the bigger and more dangerous parasite fellows. That is until we manage to enchant some of our weaponry with flame enchantments. But that won't be for a while, so the bucket will have to do for now. Now one problem I was facing with these tools that I made is that they are very brittle. See? But luckily as part of this mod pack you can also repair the tools fairly cheaply. All it costs is a couple of the resources you use to make the axe head with. At the dawn of the fourth day I left my aquatic abode and luckily it was not assaulted by spiders once again. I immediately set to gathering sand as I wanted to have some nice big windows on my aquatic base. And after doing a little bit of exploring on my cute little boat here, and gathering up a little bit of wood, I came across some luckily non-infected sheep, by which I was able to procure my last wool that I needed. And also some giblets for eating later. In that same forest I came across a couple of brown cows, which as we all know produce chocolate milk, but then it started raining and not wanting to have any monsters drop on my head due to the clouds, I decided it'd probably be a good idea if I headed home. As my tools keep breaking on a regular basis, I decided to use this stupid little uh, gravel farm thingy idea that I've seen other people do to try and gather up as many flint shards as I can. You see, crafting an iron pickaxe head is not going to be easy. It's not the standard Minecraft eat business. And my shovel just broke, as if to prove my point. But since iron tools are out of our reach for now, we're going to be stuck with our flinty broken nonsense for a little while. While it's okay because it's not too hard to repair, it is still very annoying. And although my pokey stick rapier sword thing that I was using earlier is kind of nice, I will admit it looks stupid. It's just a pointed stick, which I suppose is what a sword is. But I decided to make a flint broadsword instead as it looks better and uh, honestly it does a bit more damage too. As my sand was done cooking I decided to replace a few of the blocks around the home with some clear nice looking glass. But finally towards the end of day four with modern technology we could now create our very first bed. Now we had a lot of colors to choose from but I went with winter snow as you can clearly see. But finally I had the tools to actually go to bed and could sleep through into day five. On day five, while continuing to explore the local area, I decided to grab all the sugarcane that I could, as I was going to be needing it soon to enchant some things. I also murdered some chickens, but they had it coming. And while having a wander around, I came across an underground cave, which I thought might be my ticket to some additional iron. And worms. Disgusting, disgusting worms. Managed to find a decent haul of iron in that cave, along with some multi-legged friends. Huzzah! On my way back home after my haul, I had a bit of trouble finding my house, as you can see here with me flailing my screen around trying to find it. But eventually I found the elusive little temptress, and I used the rest of the evening to replace some more of the walls with glass. Afterwards I finally threw together some iron Jordans, but as I was standing around wasting my life waiting for things to smelt, it occurred to me that this place is in desperate need for some more space. Space that we could use for things like extra furnaces, and other such devices. Now one of the things that we need to be able to build our iron pickaxe head is clay. We need to turn clay into grout and then we can turn grout into a furnace thing and then the furnace is going to allow us to smelt a iron pickaxe. It's a bit of a process but it's worth it. With all that glass being added to our house I think it's starting to look a little bit snazzy down there but it does need a lot more space. I'm, I'm really struggling with the lack of space that we have available to us. So I elected to take some of the dark oak that I'd managed to scavenge from the surrounding area and build up some walls around the base. The idea being we build walls around, fill it up with sand, and then slowly excavate all of the water from inside. And eventually we should have something that looks kind of nice and also connects to the surface so I don't have to drown myself every time I want to go to the supermarket. Connecting the base to the surface is also going to be very important for some build ideas I have for later. But for now we'll just go through this sand filling process and have a little extra space to play with. Maybe I'll put in a pool table for ironic reasons. Once the sand was filled in, it was just a matter of removing all of the blocks that we had placed and connecting the new area to the area below. It looks terrible, it's just like a pointless chimney at this point, but we'll fix it later. At the very least, we have a lot more room for activities. I recognized it was nighttime and I had nothing better to do, so I decided to try and even out the building as best as I could. Looks like we got the spider synchronized swimming team up here. Good going, lads. 
Imagine the moves you could do as a spider, as a synchronized swimmer. All those legs. By the morning, we had a lot more space in the base. Hey, that rhymed. But the only problem was, as I had built all throughout the night to not waste any days, there was a lot of spiders above me. And as I started taking them out, I noticed something kind of funny. <laughs> There's someone in my boat. Why? That's not how you sunbathe. Imagine wanting to be trendy as a zombie. You can't get that glow on. I suppose you could fake tan. On my way to go and find some more sand, I noticed that there was a house on the horizon. And after popping in for a cup of tea, I realized that this is probably some kind of dungeon. Upstairs in a chest, there were a couple of pantaloons that had enchantments on them, but neither of them were better than my iron trousers, I think. So I decided not to keep them, but we did at least come across a bone, which is interesting because we haven't seen any skelly men yet. And the wheat is also good because we want to get a cow farm going before the parasites infect everything. I did decide to have a quick peek in the basement, just a tentative look to make sure that there's nothing I desperately could use. But aside from a few guys that had contracted ligma from their trip to the Sugondi's mountains, likely contracted from Joe, the only really useful things I found was a sword, which isn't going to be terribly useful once we upgrade our flint sword into something else, and some hoppers, which I don't have an immediate use for, but they are quite expensive to make, so they're at least nice in that sense. Oh yes, I almost forgot, I did also find some fashion scape. So there was that. Look at me with my pink helmet. Hell yeah. That's fashion, people. Honestly, the absolute best thing we got from that dungeon was just a little bit of XP here and there. And a couple of apples that we might be able to turn into golden apples later. Once some skelly men started spawning with magical weapons and glowing armor, my pussyitis started flaring up, so I decided to leave. Also, as parasites kept on spawning behind me, I was especially motivated to get the hell out of there and go home. But I made a mental note of where the stairs to the lower levels is so that I can come back here later. As it was nighttime though, and I didn't want to cross the forest in the dark, I nabbed the bed from upstairs and had a cheeky nap in the basement. After my breakfast, as I was leaving in the morning, I was attacked by spiders, which had apparently all been sitting outside, but I was able to run away bravely. I set about gathering some more sand and was interrupted by a zombie with no arms. Are you no arms Andrew over there? What are you doing, Andy? Andy ain't handy. Sorry, buddy. There's a one arm minimum. Sorry. I headed home with what I thought would be enough supplies to be able to finish the build in one go, but I've received a couple of surprises over the night. The first surprise was that tonight is apparently a blood moon. So that's good. For those of you who might not know what a blood moon is, a blood moon basically means that all kinds of monsters are going to spawn during the night, I can't sleep to skip the night, and the monsters will spawn without a limit. As I was planning on finishing off the build, this wasn't such a big deal, at least that's what I thought until I looked above me. Holy hell. Got a bit of a spider problem upstairs. And well, it was about that time that we got our first Elmo number. Basically, that number means that the parasite infection has reached phase one. Each time that number goes up, more and more dangerous parasites are going to spawn, and my life is going to get considerably less gang gang. I really, really wanted to finish this build in one go, but every time I looked up and saw the millions of eyes staring at me, it concerned me that I should probably go and deal with that problem ASAP. The healthiest thing we can do is just ignore this and pretend it doesn't exist. I did manage to do quite a bit of work uh, cleaning out the inside, but my efficiency was cut in half by the constant chittering of spider legs outside. Come the morning, I decided it was finally time to address this problem, and hopefully it won't be too hard to deal with. Okay. <laughs> oh boy. And there's one parasite among them all. <laughs> Why is there only one parasite? There seems so few. Good God. And now it's up to me, the exterminator, Steve the exterminator, to get rid of the pests. It took quite a while to get rid of all of the stupid spiders, but the problems had only really just begun. Once the number was thinned down a fair bit, the only spiders that seemed to be remaining were infected with the parasite disease. So every time I would hit them and reduce some of their health, they would pop out and attack me. It was about then that I realized that if I was below the parasites, they weren't able to swim downwards, so I had a little bit of a strategy to take them down. So these baloney parasites weren't giving us too much trouble anymore. And the good thing was, due to the amount that we were having to kill, our tools ended up leveling up a few times. 
And before I was even able to clear out every single monster that was above me, I started to realize the sun was setting again. Yes, I'd spent a whole 24 hours trying to clear out these guys, and now it was time to go back to bed. In the morning, I decided to play around with my weapons a bit, and changed out my regular sword hilt for a bone one. This gives it a quality called Fractured, which means I do slightly more damage as I hit people. Which immediately came in handy, as there was one spider left above. Now I knew I needed a little bit more spruce to spruce up the base, hey hey. But while I was on a farming run, I was attacked by a flailing armed man. Uh oh. Nope. Ugh. Whoa! How about no? Yes, the fact that we are now in phase one means that infected villages like that are going to spawn far more frequently. And also the surrounding wildlife such as cows and so on will also be far more commonly infected than before. Which is not a good thing honestly because we need to set up a cow farm soon and the likelihood of that cow farm turning into a monster army is quite high. Thankfully though, there is one thing that we can do to try and slow the infection down. Due to all the parasites that I killed recently, I got these two ruptor thingies, and with them I can craft a lure, and by using the lure like this, the points will be reduced, and the progress of the infection will be pushed back a little bit. My spruce in hand, it was now time to finish off the base, as I am sick to death of it looking like some stupid chocolate cube. And thanks to the plentiful amount of resources that I'd acquired, I was finally able to spend a good amount of time just building and changing the base to make it look nicer. In the morning, as I was sick of using stupid flint tools, I decided it was finally time to make that forge and craft myself an iron pickaxe. Once I had all the pieces necessary, it was just a matter of throwing that little guy together, filling him up with some lava, and then pouring some goo into a pickaxe head mold. I gotta say, it's quite an enjoyable process and I like the immersion. I just wish it hadn't taken me 12 days to get all of the ingredients for the furnace. I really need feathers to be able to deal with some of the bigger parasites that are going to be arriving soon. And having a couple of chickens bred in my house is definitely going to be a good idea. And due to the size of some of the parasite spiders I saw on my way back, I was certainly of the mind to start stockpiling some ammunition. Or at the very least some very serious volumes of bug spray. Once I got home I threw together a little delivery system into my base, sort of a chimney styled laundry chute I suppose, and I then crammed the chicken down against its will. My abductee now safely behind bars, it would soon be a matter of just going out and finding another one. And then they will breed and produce us eggs and feathers. Kind of like a arranged marriage, I suppose. After I awoke in the morning, it was finally time for me to throw together that iron pickaxe. We can now go searching for diamonds, which we are going to want to do quite sharpish, honestly, because uh, the parasites are getting quite big out there and, um, well, I don't like it. So uh, diamond armor and enchanting table, here we come. Now I'm gonna take a brief interlude to explain to you the existential despair that I felt while mining for diamonds. I decided to just make some obsidian because it was more interesting than what I was presently engaged in. Usually I'm not too scared of a good grind. In fact, one of my favorite games is old school grindscape, but I unfortunately went on a considerable dry streak trying to find some diamonds. But because the parasites are getting so big, we have to finish this grind as quickly as possible. Otherwise, we are definitely going to die soon. Now, one thing that this mod allows you to do is you can bling up your pickaxe. So I'm going to throw some redstone on it here, and this is going to make it mine a little bit faster. And thank the Lord that I decided to do that, because by God, I was on such a dry streak. At first, I was collecting all the iron and gold and stuff that I found, but after a period of time, I got so sick of mining that I just decided, you know what, I'm just not stopping until we get either diamonds or lapis. And the only reason I was collecting lapis is because similar to redstone you can put it on the pickaxe and it kind of works like fortune It makes your pickaxe luckier and you can get more drops It felt after a while like I was being taunted like some sick Lovecraftian monstrosity had condemned me to play this game Just toiling endlessly for those fragmented scraps of dopamine at the back of my mind that I will surely receive once I find the damn diamonds and I've been looking for days now And I'm sick of it and I just want to stop but I can't stop because the parasites get too strong and <laughs> oh, here we go. Luckily, by the time I finally found diamonds, my pickaxe was sufficiently enchanted with sapphires, or a lapis or whatever, and we ended up with nine diamonds from a single vein. Which is nice, and we can at least make our enchanting table now, and a couple of other diamond goodies to boot. My torment over, I then decided to leave the mine, and as I'd lost all track of time, I decided to check what day it was. And to put it into perspective, it was now day 16. Or rather, day 17, because I went to bed straight after.
Now the first thing I found out on day 17 was that you can't cook up diamonds in the same way you could iron. I don't know why I thought I would be able to do that, but it is quite tricky to rub brain cells together when you've just been mining for three hours. After a bit of homework, I discovered the way you utilize diamonds on the tools is you tip the edges with them. It's very spiffy and I quite like it. And also it saves me diamonds because I only need one diamond to do that. Next on the agenda, obviously, is to go back down into the mine and get some purple obsidian stuff. We need it for the enchanting table to make our weapons into magic weapons. Now I've got a nice spot in the attic where we can put the enchanting room right next to the chicken coop. Because I mean, honestly, what's the point of having a magical enchanting table if you aren't going to get it covered in chicken feces? Now I did have a quick peek at what kind of enchantments we could get and sort of randomly threw my armor at the table and just took whatever it would give. My reasoning being some enchanted armor is better than none and might just help me keep all my bleeding internal where it's supposed to be. But there are two things that we need right now. We need experience, which we are going to extract from our redditor friends over here. And we also need sugarcane for paper to make some bookshelves. These zombies are just a bunch of nerds, but the parasites are much more dangerous and will one-shot me if given the chance. Ow. Oh, hello, you multi-legged freak. Whoa. And speaking of parasites, hello, meaty Jim. The only way we're going to be able to really survive the bigger parasites is if we have some serious enchantments on our armor. Now these enchantments are going to be rare and quite hard for us to get, so we're going to have to find a consistent source of XP for us to use. One such source of XP could be a cow farm if we can get that going, but we need wheat, and hence why I'm digging up the topography here. After a very minor kidnapping, it was finally time to start breeding the chickens and building a cow farm. Now while I was underground earlier, I kept on hearing big parasites around me, so I'm throwing together a couple of golden apples just in case we need them. But now that we have the cow pen complete, all we need now is some cows. But don't worry, I know how to wrangle cows. It's just a matter of going out in my van and luring out some unsuspecting victims. Hmm. There's something wrong about the way I phrased that sentence. Lucky for me, there's a lot of cows in this forest, so it's... Uh-oh. Oh, balls. There's an infected cow. No. Ah, uh, wormies. Now the fact that we found an infected cow does not necessarily mean that all the other ones are infected. But we need the XP, so even if some of them are infected, we may as well keep them all penned up anyway. And hopefully we can utilize them somehow. The only bad thing would be that if they are infected, we can't utilize their hide to make leather books. So at this point, we've just got to hope that they aren't infected. Now, the other thing we need for our bookshelves is, of course, sugar cane. So we'll plant these puppies, and once the farm is fully finished, we can go and collect. On the way back to the house, I discovered why my real estate value was decreasing rapidly. I keep on finding these infected cysts popping up all over my ground. Isn't cyst a lovely word? But regardless, it is a symptom of the parasite infection getting worse. We may have some serious problems soon. In the morning, I worked a smidge on the sugarcane farm and gave a little bit of wheat to Bessie and Berthold, and then spent the rest of the day doing a little bit of reno work. Now, one of the good things about being in that dungeon earlier where we fought the magical skeleton men is I finally managed to get some bones that I'd been sorely missing, and we can use the bone meal on the farm to get some nicely juiced up crops. Now, as I needed some more wood, I decided to take a quick frolic through the trees, but it seemed like the further I went into the darkness, the more little cysts and things I would find. I feel like this forest is becoming more infested by the day, and soon it may even be too dangerous to go through. Since every bloody where I was going, I was getting assaulted by parasites or finding cysts, I decided it would be a good idea to build as many arrows as I could. We're definitely going to be using them, that's for certain, and we need to find a flame enchantment as soon as possible. Now at the beginning of day 20, I finally took the time to use the goo and make myself an iron axe head. I have a plan to make a mob farm at some point. We're going to be needing a lot of XP for what we want to accomplish. And sadly, cheesy though it may be, I think a mob farm is going to be the only way we're able to do it. Now I found a couple of primitive parasites looking straight at my base. Now I'm hoping they actually can't sense that I'm down there. Because if parasites start swimming into the underwater base, then I'm going to be royally screwed. The hell are these things? They're mutated goats. Tell the others what you saw here, Timmy. <laughs> so horrible. Poor Tim Tim. 
Now while I was wandering about aimlessly, I suddenly realised there was a big shadow on the ground. And at first I thought it was some kind of shader bug. But then I looked up and realised, my god, there's a floating island in the sky. And I'm very curious to find out what's at the top. But that will have to wait for now as I have more immediate concerns. Namely the fact that those two parasites were staring right at my base has me worried. And I'm feeling very motivated to go and find the remaining diamonds I need to make an armor set. Therefore I'm using the remaining diamonds I have to make a diamond helmet of coolness. Which sadly is going to have to replace our pink helmet of legitness. But for now we need to go back into the mine and do a little bit more mining until we finish off our armor. Before I could get too excited however, I ended up digging all my way into a dungeon of all things. I decided whatever's in there probably can't be worse than some of the parasites that are going to be spawning soon. So I figured let's have a quick peek and... Yeah, that doesn't look good. Oh! The first room I came across had a whole bunch of blazers inside of it. I could hear them shouting at me and shooting at me. Now rubbing a few brain cells together, I poured a bottle of water down. And this apparently hurt some of the blazers. As I saw one of them spawn right there, I figured the spawner must be in the middle of that obsidian block. So I made myself a little safety tunnel and had a look inside to see if I was right. And in a bizarre turn of events, I was. However, I still had the rest of the blazers to deal with, so I wasn't out of the woods yet. Whoa! Ow! Okay. Where is he? Oh, there he is. Whew. Oh, okay, let's just get down there. Where is he? I'll have you. Hey, we got him. Ooh, gold block. Now what? <laughs> I made myself a cheeky little staircase to remember where I came in. of a hoe for now. There'll be time for hoes in the future, but for now we need to work on our business. Oh, I feel like this is a very high end dungeon and I shouldn't really be here. <laughs> Indeed, once the bony men started shooting arrows at me and I saw their enchanted armor, I realized that I was indeed right and I'm certainly under leveled for this dungeon. Don't do it this way. Yeah, shoot the spider. There you go. Get him, lads. Okay. Oh, came out with the skeletons. So I very narrowly escaped death there. If that wither skeleton had managed to smack me in the mouth, I definitely would have died. But luckily for me, just as he verged the corner, so did one of his skeleton friends, who happened to shoot him at the same time, thus forcing him to turn away from me and attack his friend. Very lucky escape there from me. Seeing as the boys had lost interest, I don't know, maybe I smell or something. Seeing as they lost interest, I figured maybe I could use some strategy here and loot a few of them for their giblets. Come here, Skelly. My shield is gonna break, isn't it? Oh, balls. Luckily though, like a pubescent boy in geography class, I had wood in my pants and was able to build myself another shield. With some careful taunts and some strategized cowardice, I was able to kill one of the withery men. What the hell's going on down there? <laughs> My skeleton friends over there appear to be enjoying what looks like Texas in the summertime. Lads, is everything alright? I really wanted to sneak my way towards this chest here, but every time I would get close, some more skinny Samsons would jump out and run at me. I tried to go down another passage, but it was completely filled with arachnids. Nope. Oh my god. After my second near-death encounter with Wither Skellingtons, I decided it was time to leave. But at the very least, this encounter had gained me a few things. I did manage to find some nether wart, which is awesome, and I decided to stick around and try and get one more drop from the Skelly men. Oh! Hell! What the hell happened there? You got a necrotic bone. What the heck is that? Yes, I was unaware at the time, 
but this actually ended up being the best thing I could have found in this dungeon. Sufficiently hazed at this point, I decided to leave the dungeon, with the intention of coming back later once I'm a little stronger. But for now, we'll get to doing what we damn well came down here to do. I ended up finding some diamonds quite quickly, but as we are in a desperate need for a lot of these puppies, I decided it would be a good idea if we stayed down in the mine until we completely finish off enchanting our pickaxe. The way that we do that is we just find enough sapphires, lapis, whatever, and we just glue it to the pickaxe like so. As if to remind me to hurry the hell up, however, as I was doing this, we entered the second parasite phase. Old. The only brief break I took from mining was to quickly pop upstairs and make myself a fashionable diamond chestplate and some pennies. I mean pants. The other thing we quickly investigated while on Smoko was we had a look at that new sword bone that we found. Apparently, it adds a trait called necrotic, and necrotic heals you for 10% of the damage that you do. That's really good. So good, in fact, that we can actually throw away our enchanted sword that we've been using and instead go back to the self-crafted sword. With the addition of iron and diamonds and the necrotic bone, our sword is now stronger than the other one, and it'll last longer, and it can heal me. It would probably even do my taxes for me if I asked. Now, I'm not gonna lie, uh, we did find quite a few diamonds, but it took a long time to find enough lapis to finish this off. As you can tell by the level, we're almost level 30 again. And so several days later, I emerged from the mine with a fully enchanted pickaxe and three quarters of a stack of fresh ice. After eliminating the Baruto loyalists from my lawn the next day, I will smite you in my boat. Huzzah! I was thinking it's probably a good idea for us to enchant our new diamond armor and then go back into the dungeon or something. Now the last remaining thing that we really need is some more sugarcane. So I thought I'd gather up some sand here. Cool, blimey, this shovel is very nice now that I've glued some redstone to it. But I thought maybe I could gather up this sand here, plant some sugarcane across the water's edge, and then head into the dungeon, which is right next door. That way, if I spend a few days in the dungeon, when I come up, there should be a whole line of sugarcane for me to harvest. While I was placing the sand, however, a squid started annoying me, so he suddenly and mysteriously died. And so I decided to dye my bed black in his honor. Thanks to the sugarcane I had collected recently, I had enough books to be able to make three bookshelves. Which isn't a lot, but it's fine. We can at the very least place them here, and enchant some of our diamond stuff with weak enchantments. And then we'll pop down into the dungeon, get some XP, and then hopefully get some better enchantments. Ended up with Projectile Protectiones Dos, Protection Uno, and and a couple of other protections here and there. Now, I'm not exactly going to be walking around like some immortal pharaoh here, but I am at least going to be a little tankier than I was before. Now, one thing we need before going into the dank dungeon of despair is to get some more arrows. And for that, we need flint and we need feathers. Flint isn't too hard to get, of course, thanks to the gravelly boys. Oh, hello. The harder part is really the feathers, but one thing I found out recently is, uh, is that if we kill things with my fortune pickaxe here, for some reason it seems to give me additional feathers as well, as if it also had the looting enchantment. Uh, you stuck under it. Come on, there we go. So just then we gained 12 feathers. Oh yeah, that's good. Right, oh, time for us to get our latex on and head down into the dungeon. Let's go. Now I didn't run into too much trouble, but I did find that I was consistently running out of arrows. Although I was able to obtain a lot more books. So easy come, easy go, I suppose. Oh. Well, thanks for playing. Um. Oh! Good lord, I hate those things. I hate how they can jump. I managed to find a brewing stand and a couple of magma creams. I also managed to find a music disc which I threw into the record player here. And I'm not gonna lie, the music's terrible. I feel like I'm getting a call on MSN Messenger. But then later on the music changed to a nice 10-bit relaxation vibe. Kinda made me want to play Pokemon again. The music was honestly reminding me of a simpler time. Like that one time my dad bought me a 32-pack of bubblegum and I swallowed the whole thing and had to go to hospital. <laughs> True story. <laughs> Although I was trying to be careful in the dungeon, there were times where the skeleton men were able to sneak up on me. And every time they managed to surround me, I ended up taking more and more damage to my armor. And so I quite quickly came to the realization that if I'm going to be able to take on a lot more of these guys, then I'm definitely going to need some unbreaking enchantments or some mending or something to help my armor last longer. And I'm not going to lie to you, the rewards we got in that dungeon were just trash. Just trash. I don't even want to talk about it, really. But eventually, after many fornicated arachnids, I found myself at the level of the dungeon that we found underground. 
Kablamo indeed. But one valuable thing that we did happen to get was all of this quartz laying around. It gives a little bit of XP, not that much, but the main thing that we can use it for is similar to the redstone, we can glue it to our sword and it'll make the sword do more damage. Hence why I am ruining these dungeon monsters chessboard here. To be completely honest with you, I think the best thing that I found in that dungeon was just all of these diamonds here. Ended up with 19 of them. <laughs> yes. But honestly, I was getting a bit sick of the dungeon at this point. It's been a few days now since I've seen the sun and I'm starting to contract rickets. Did manage to find a spare pair of diamond panties, I mean pants, pants, I, I said pants. But after that, I decided it's time to go home. It's time I get some sunlight and stop being such a degenerate. Good news is I was right about the sugarcane thing and we ended up with a whole bunch to take home with us. Now using my finest glue stick and blue tack, I managed to throw my quartz onto my sword, drastically increasing its damage. It went from like eight to 12, I think. No, no, 15. The number's right there. How did I get that wrong? And thanks to our sugary goodness, we now have a bunch more paper and the capability to make ourselves a bunch more bookshelves. Now all we need to do is learn how to read. We'll do that later though, for now we're gonna throw some level 30 enchants on our gear. Now one thing you'll notice about this bad boy is it has burning thorns too. And what that means is that anytime something attacks me, it has a chance to be lit on fire. Now I didn't know it yet, but that juicy little tidbit is going to literally save my life later. It also turned out that the fortune on my pickaxe also increases the amount of seeds I can get from mowing the lawn like this. Which is fantastic because we can now use these seeds to feed peeps and teriyaki here. Breed, damn you. I need your eggs and your feathers. Thank you. Egg time. Huzzah! Oh! Good stuff! Now although we are currently level 30, which is great and all, we do need some extra things. We are going to need a lot of XP in order to get the enchants that we want. These cows will help with the XP part, however there are two other ways that we might be able to get our enchants. And we desperately need those enchants. From my calculations, I think we have around two or three days until we reach phase three of the parasite infection, at which point things are going to get bad very quickly. I don't know how bad, but you'll see soon enough. In the meantime, I knew I had to find those enchantments. Of the three ways for us to get enchantments, number one is just regular enchanting. Number two is going to dungeons and finding as many enchanting books as possible. Number three, which would be absolutely the best option, is if we can find a village. Villages have librarians, and librarians sell books. And these books can be any enchanting book in the game. So I decided that over the next few days, we're definitely gonna go exploring and try our best to find any village nearby. But as I was wandering about the nearby forest, I came across another dungeon. I'm probably about five minutes from home at this point. Not too far away, but we may as well have a look inside. I had a quick kip on the first level, and then I repeated the process similar to last time of getting turned into a pincushion by scaly men. The good news is, thanks to the armor upgrades, I can now seemingly outheal their damage. Now I was really only in here for a quick nosy, I just wanted to see what I could find on the first couple of levels. But eventually curiosity got the better of me, and I went a few levels deeper and tried to see what I could find. I didn't find very much, honestly, I was unlucky once again. But I did happen to see a lot more parasites this time. Here he comes. Oh, he was a bit tankier. Yes, indeed, I'm very glad that I decided to upgrade my sword before I went in. But it seemed to me like pretty much every corner I turned was filled with parasites. Like this pit down here is just filled with the things. So let's just close this puppy off. There we are. And I even came across what looked to be a parasite horse. I haven't seen one of these before. And hopefully I won't see one again. Oh. Oh. Good lord. The hell was that? Well, that was... horrible. And on the next level, I had my first encounter with a larger form of parasite. It doesn't look like he can get down here. Let's see if we can burn him. Oh, okay, we got him. Oh, God, I hate those bigger ones. I'm fairly certain they could kill me. So, let's hope we don't run into any more of those. 
In the next chest, I found one of the best enchantments I could have found, and it was at that exact time that I started hearing a most hideous sound. And in case you're wondering, can Endermen get infected with the parasite illness? Yes. Yes, they can. And they are arguably one of the most dangerous low-level parasites that there is. So we're getting the hell out of this dungeon right now. Literally the second I heard the Enderman sound, I started running. I don't know if he definitely got infected, but I'm not taking the chance. I'm getting out of here. Sadly though, my troubles were just beginning, as as soon as I tried to leave the house, I was ambushed by zombie wolves. Oh ho! Here, Wolfie. Alright, let's give this a crack. Here we go. Ooh, okay. Well, I'm glad that worked. Now, I didn't know what was waiting for me outside, but I decided I definitely need to build a boat and head to the water as quickly as possible. All I knew for certain is that I'm in incredible danger right now. Run. Whoa! Okay, that is a lot of spiders. Oh my god. No. No. Oh no. Teleport onto the lava, please. This is bad. I need to get under something too high. Immediately. Oh my god, no. The mushroom. So I have absolutely no idea where that Enderman went in the end, and during my very sheepish and scared walk home, I was constantly thinking that he's going to jump around a corner at any moment, but he never did, and I never saw him again. So this is a PSA going out to you guys, if you happen to know the Enderman that attacked me outside of that dungeon, just let him know that I'm thinking about him, and if he wants to, we could meet up or something, you know, see where it goes. I just feel like we had something, and, and then he just kind of disappeared. And just, it's kind of sad if we don't, you know, at least... I don't know. Still shaking from being ghosted, I decided it's time to upgrade my chestplate a little further. So here we go. Here we got a couple more enchants on there. Though I should mention this enchant here, Meltdown, supposedly makes things explode. So that should be fun. I decided to stay a little bit up past my bedtime in the hopes that some enemies would spawn and I could get some additional XP. But once I noticed that pretty much the only thing that was approaching me was parasites, I decided to go to bed anyway. Basically just spend the next day farming and restocking some supplies. I'm a good old-fashioned farming boy. I work hard, I play hard, and damn if I don't have an attractive sister. And the next day I wandered into the forest to see just how badly the infection has gotten. I managed to take down a infected bear before it could see me. It was lucky. But then as I was trying to gather some more food, it seemed like every animal I attacked was infected. No. Oh. I knew I was going to have to expand the base a little more, and hopefully build some fortifications that would be resistant to the parasites' attacks. I know the parasites can't break every block in the world, and I'm fairly sure that stone bricks is one of the ones that they can't break through. So the idea currently is to connect the base to the surface of the water, and then build the rest of it with stone bricks. Every so often though, I would get a little bored, and go out and murder some redditors for free XP. Now there are a few ways that we can slow the parasite infection. Number one is by killing parasites. Each one we kill decreases the phase by a little bit. And in addition to that, using these giblets that they drop to make lures, which decreases it even further. Come here, wavy arms, McGee. Oh, perfect. Hmm, where are the parasites? They're gonna be around here. I wonder if these cows are infected. Let's test them out. Nope, that one wasn't infected. Ah! 
That one was definitely infected. I really do wonder exactly how many of my uh, farmed cows are infected. I assume it's quite a lot. Upon wandering back to my base, I found one of the cows had somehow escaped and sadly was able to confirm that indeed some of them are infected. Hopefully not all of them. Let's... I, I say hopefully. You wouldn't be infected, would you, Bertrude? But indeed, we definitely have a problem on our hands. This forest seems to be completely filled with infection and literally monsters are around every corner. When popping back inside, I managed to get the Depth Strider enchantment on my boots. This will help my swimming speed and will drastically speed up my ability to build. During that night, I was able to finish off the roof and we are now connected to the surface. And in the morning, I sat to finishing off the top floor. But it was annoying because I kept on hearing my upstairs neighbors walking around. Honestly, it sounds like they've got a thousand legs up there. Oh right, well that makes sense. What? What? Oh! It's my armor. My meltdown thing. <laughs> I was like, why are these spiders exploding? I spent pretty much the rest of the day trying to slow the infection as best as I could. Oh, there's another flaily armed, wacky waving inflatable arm flailing parasite man. The flame enchantment that I found that I put onto my bow certainly helped a bit, but I couldn't help but think that I was fighting a losing battle. And sadly, that night, my suspicions were all but confirmed. Oh no. What the hell is that? Oh. Okay, he can't hit down. Oh. Another Enderman. Excellent. Oh, these guys hurt. Okay, these guys can swim down. Okay, he's dead. Oh, man. I don't like Big Daddy over there. Can we burn him? Okay, we can burn him. Ooh, I'm so glad we have that fire. Oh my god, what the hell is that? Burn these horrible things. Oh no. Oh, balls. Okay, here's the idea. We're gonna lure him onto here and we'll burn him. I think this is the only way that we can kill it. Burning. Please, no, just die, dude. Okay, we're swimming. <laughs> he can't swim down, I don't think. He's breaking the base. Go, go, go. Yes! Holy hell! Okay, I did not have a fun time dealing with that guy. The hell was even that? Due to the heart palpitations I suffered thanks to that parasite, I was once again encouraged to go back to my enchanting and try and find the best enchants that we can. I ended up seeing that we have Physical Protection 2 available to us. Now although this isn't the absolute best thing we could get, this is one of the best enchantments. So we need to find enough XP before nightfall, otherwise that enchantment will disappear. So it's time for us to test out whether or not the cow farm is indeed infected. We'll use up the rest of the wheat that we can, and then we'll off as many as we need to to get to level 30. Then sadly, as I chewed into the first hamburger, indeed I was correct. Quite possibly every single cow in this pen is infected with the disease, which means no leather for us and decreased experience as well. Oh! And also heart attacks as they somehow managed to pop out of the pen. Thinning the herd was a difficult task, and as every so often the cows would spit worms out of them, I later got a bit bored and decided to go with the lava strategy. It seemed to work more efficiently, I would say. Sorry lads, but you've all got the ligma disease and therefore you've got to go. Ooh, I got some milk apparently. My god, look at all the worms. Oh, it appears you survived the fire. No survivors, please. I did actually end up leaving a few still alive, traumatized though they may be. The reason being, although they're definitely all infected, we can at least still get XP from them by giving them wheat. And also some milk if we ever need it. Thankfully though, thanks to the valiant sacrifice of those cows, we now had enough XP to grab our physical protection enchantment. Now this will decrease the amount of physical damage we take from the parasites by like 20%, and that's definitely going to be crucial if we want to live, which I do. 
Inspired by my empowered sword and my new armor, I decided to go back into that dungeon we found underground and see if we can't make it to some of the chests this time. I was also hoping that some of the withers might drop an additional bone, but sadly we didn't get lucky. Yes, yeah, sadly we didn't get to bone anyone. However, in the chest we did end up finding much better enchanting books than we found elsewhere. So this is definitely the place to look if we do want the best enchanting books in the game. The ones I happened to find were veritable garbage, but it is what it is. Stop it, spider! I am narrating! After a while it was time to leave the dungeon. We did keep a few books but none of them too special. The best thing we found actually was blaze powder, which we can glue to our sword and make it into a fire sword. So now not only do we have a bow that can kill parasites, but we have a veritable parasite killing stabby stick as well. We managed to get these enchantments on our bow by combining these two bad boys. And now we have something that would give Robin Hood a half chub. But the main thing is really that we can go out and we can fight parasites without having to worry too much about death. Just so long as they aren't the extremely large ones that I'm fairly sure will still kill me in one or two hits. The next day I continued doing what I've been doing. You know, basically killing things with teeth the size of cucumbers. Basically just living every day in a desperate yet futile attempt to delay the inevitable. But luckily for me I was able to settle in for a nice quiet evening. No, I'm just kidding, the game was taking the piss and gave me a blood moon. Only this time it's not a good idea for me to stay inside. I'm gonna have to go outside and kill as many things as I can to prevent any parasites from possibly causing a chain reaction of parasite infections. Thankfully, one of the benefits of living on an island is that the creatures can't swim very well, so I could always just bob menacingly around them, ducking and weaving bravely under arrows and other such bollocks. Oh, 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 oh boy, oh, this isn't good. I feel like I'm in a blender, a spider blender. Oh, here we go, we've got some breathing room. Oh, never mind. Eventually it dawned on me that this is probably the most stupid way that I could possibly do this and after quickly checking how much durability damage my armor has taken, quick hint, it's a lot, I decided that I should probably do this in a more clever way and try and build a mob farm or something. So I decided to use some of the blocks that I'd stored away for winter, throw them on the ground here and then make myself a nice little safety bunker of sorts. In this way we should be able to take care of all the spiders and such and simultaneously receive considerably less envenomations. In conclusion, it worked! Yes! Get stabbed, nerds! And thanks to all that XP we got, we got a brand new bubblegum helmet. Now one thing that to me was a considerable cause of concern was this brand new cave that seems to have popped up in the past few days. I don't know how long this has been here, I am confused as to where it came from, and it seems to be filled with parasites. Yep, just an all round bad Yelp review from me, I'm afraid. But in all seriousness though, this is incredibly concerning. And in all honesty, it really seems like there's a lot of parasites growing underground at the moment. And so I'm worried that the infection is actually much worse than I think it is. And the parasites we are seeing on the surface are just the ones that make it to the surface and are not really representative of just how many big parasites there are. Due to this realization, I suddenly felt the need to start building with bigger bricks. I didn't really know what I was building. All I knew is I wanted it to connect over to the bank on the north side. That way I'd have some kind of defensive structure that I could use in case the parasites started coming at me from all sides. And so I spent the day with my gloves on building what ended up being some kind of boring bridge. But as I was clearing a bit of land on the northern side I was thinking maybe we'll build a tower here as well. But let's not get our dicks too hard here, we have to finish the bridge first. As I knew I was going to be needing a lot of bricks, I decided to make a very advanced and incredible machine. I call it the Stone Brickinator, and what it does is it turns stone into into diamonds. On day 47, as I thought we were getting close to day 50, it's probably a good idea for us to quickly pop into the nether and see if we can find anything interesting. But aside from a tree violently molesting the laws of biology, there isn't really much to talk about. There were no fortresses nearby or anything like that. And after some gentle persuasion by the locals, I decided to leave. On the next day, due to the obscene amount of damage that my armor keeps taking, I was thinking that it's imperative that we get mending as soon as possible. So I've got myself a slightly enchanted fishing rod here, and I'm just praying to the Lord that we get ourselves a mending book. The chance of getting one is like one in a hundred, but uh, I don't know, maybe we'll get lucky. I did not get lucky, sadly, but it's fine, we can always try again later. For now, I had decided that it's time for me to explore. I decided to go east, and not stop going east until I fell off the edge of this map. And once I fell off the edge of the map, I would keep going east until I found a village or something. I eventually found the or something, which is that I found absolutely nothing for miles and just decided, hey, I should probably go home now. I did find a couple of dungeons on the way home and even climbed my way onto one of those floating islands. Turns out they're a disgusting slime island. The whole island is made out of slime. Oh God, it's horrible. 
It's like touching wet food in the sink. But eventually, I made my way home, having gained absolutely nothing other than the knowledge that there is absolutely nothing to the east. I finally go outside, and all I gain is a bunch of disgusting slime blocks. And yes, I brought them home with me. My backpack probably smells. On day 52, I did a bit more work on my bridge. And on day 53, I did a bit more work on my bridge. Man, you can really tell that I had absolutely no plan when making this bridge. <laughs> this bridge is as useful as a wet paper towel. I did decide to dig myself a new fishing hole, as I got sick of fishing in the ocean. It was a little too moist for my taste. I will say not that much happened over the next few days, but one thing I can definitely tell you is that everywhere I turned there were new parasites, like this horrible four-legged fellow here and his blobby friend. One thing I did do, however, is I took one of the enchantment books I found in that dungeon and I threw it onto a wooden sword. This enchantment is called Purification, and what it does is, with a bit of tough love, you can cure a zombie villager. It is kind of a random chance sort of deal. I'm not just beating this man for the sake of it. Oh, there he goes. And what, pray tell, are you? Damn it, he's a Fletcher. I wanted a Liberian. Alright, well, tomorrow we'll build him a place to stay. I sort of wanted a blocky stone bunker of sorts, somewhere I could go in case I was being chased by parasites, and at the same time could have some villagers nice and safe inside. And I also had no idea what kind of parasites would be coming at me next, so I wanted to leave a little bit of room for some glass so that I could see outside. But not enough room so that they could just crash through the glass if they wanted to. While I was building, I kept on hearing this horrible sound in my ear. Yeah, that one. And although I had absolutely no idea what that sound was, I had a deep-seated fear within me that it was somehow parasite-related. And indeed, I may have been correct, for on the night of the 58th, I was ambushed by my first flying parasite. He went down without too much trouble, but he did cause a lot of stress in me. I was hoping with the second zombie I was able to catch that I'd be able to start a villager farm. But as I started delivering him the cure, he suddenly turned into a parasite and attacked me. Damn you, Cornelius! Look what you've made me do! I loved you like a butler, or perhaps a housemaid. But with Cornelius died any hopes we had of creating a villager farm, so we're stuck with smelly old Jerome for now, until we can find another villager. On the morning of the 59th, I awoke to a hideous sound of another flying parasite nearby. Luckily, this one hadn't seen me, and so I was able to take him down too without too much trouble. But it has probably proved my worst fear, which is that there are parasite tunnels under the water, and inside these tunnels are likely hundreds of parasites. Every so often, one of those parasites evolves and breaks through to the surface, and that's why we end up with these flying parasites around us. One thing's for sure, I need to hurry the hell up and finish the base. We're well and truly into phase three of the parasite infection at this point, and pretty much any time I go near this forest over here, I get attacked by an enderman or something even worse. So I pretty much only set foot at the farm at the moment if everything is absolutely grown, and I really need the resources. On the day of the 60th, it was pretty much proven to me that there is a hole directly next to the bunker, as two large adapted parasites had swum up from below. I got very lucky with the high ground and was able to burn them before they could get to me, but it's just a matter of time really until my luck runs out. And later that day, I came to the disgusting realization that the island nearby had also become infected. And on the island was a new type of parasite that I hadn't even seen before. And as I tried to take him down, he summoned the powers of hentai and was spawning tentacles all around me. What? Whoa! Just die. I gotta say, 0 out of 10, this was horrifying. Once Tentacle Daddy was taken down though, I didn't have too much trouble taking down the rest of them. You know, I should say that if I didn't have a flame bow at this point, I would probably be digesting like a packet of crisps. Sadly though, we don't have unlimited ammo, and I ran out of arrows before I could kill the last guy. So I had to try and take him down with other means. Oh, he jumps. Uh. No! Oh my god, he broke the shield. Whew. That evening, while making sure I got all the other parasites on the island, I came across another tentacle daddy, and it seemed to be spawning other parasites near it. I suddenly realized that if I find any of these guys, they've got to be removed immediately. Now it occurred to me since my last shield broke, it's probably not too unspiffy of an idea to make an actual good shield instead of the standard Minecraft ones. So here we've got a crude wooden shield, and after we get a few bits of iron, we can turn it into a better one. I kept on trying to fish up that mending book, but snails that have fallen in a salt pot have better luck than me, so sadly, I 
I really didn't get anything. I even tried fishing throughout the night, fighting off Redditors with both hands, but still I got nothing. On day 62 I decided to revisit the Balkans. There were a bunch of ores that I didn't even recognize, like this blue one here. Sadly even a diamond pickaxe can't break it, so I'm not really sure how I'm supposed to gather those. I also found this kind of snot looking one, but again a diamond pickaxe isn't able to mine it. So I elected to leave in the hopes that I would figure it out later. Now although I was only going to be in the nether for a little bit of exploration, I made sure to be very careful and not go swimming in any lava. Yes, I will save my Anakin Skywalker impression for another day. As I was crossing a big field of soul sand, I tried to do the speedrunner technique of placing a block as you jump, and found out that I am just garbage. Uh, I, mean, I mean, look at this footage. I mean, good god. Oh, I got that one. Esports reps, I am ready and my contact information is in my about page. If you happen to be walking through the Balkans and find that your slime has gone red, I would recommend consulting your nearest physician. Fully clenched, I made my way across a pool of lava and found myself at the base of a nether fortress thingy. Against OSHA recommendation, I decided to stairway my way up around the outside. And once inside, I channeled my loot goblin powers and immediately set to rummaging through the underwear drawer of the nether denizens. The people of the Balkans may seem spicy at first, but once you get to know them, they will light you on fire. The loot was trash, but we did at least leave with one blaze rod, three nether wood, and three diamonds. It did occur to me while I was leaving, however, that we hadn't seen any parasite whatsoever in the nether, and I'm not entirely sure why this is. I think they should be able to spawn in the nether, but they seem to not be. And so we're having to ask ourselves now the real hard questions, such as, would we rather live in a parasite-infested apocalypse, or the Balkans? That's a tough one. On day 63, I thought I would pop over to the Forests of Madness and see if the magma cubes I collected in the nether would kill parasites the same as fire does. So I was trying to lead Jean-Claude here onto the magma blocks, but he kept on running around them and then he died of unrelated reasons. I decided to leave the magma blocks in the ground in the hopes that anyone leaving the forest might accidentally step on them and die, in much the same way that I leave bear traps on hiking trails in real life. However, I soon realized that my plan probably wasn't going to work against the parasites that don't have legs. What? Oh no. Okay, I got him. Ooh. Yes, old flying Frank there, in his decision to attack me, left a massive hole tunneling out of the ground. So I decided to dig up the magma blocks I'd placed before and put them on the outside of the hole just in case anything else tries to come up. I was at that point also considering that maybe it would be a good idea to go down into that tunnel and have a look to see exactly how bad the situation had become. But before I was going to do that, however, I needed to do some preparations. First things first, with the giblets we've got, we can make a couple of lures and hopefully decrease the phase from three down to two. Okay, that's one. Okay, okay, that did not decrease the phase. That means we are very deep into phase three and we are therefore heavily screwed. On day 65, I finally had a little bit of luck with fishing. Another adapted yellow eye came up from the tunnels during the day, but thankfully I was able to take him down before he saw me. But after that, I finally got something worth having from fishing. I found a bow with the adept enchantment. All that means is that anything I kill with that bow gives additional XP, which is gonna be great for us re-rolling and trying to get the best enchants in the game. You're dead. Stop groaning. But thanks to this bow, I'm thinking maybe it's a good idea if we try and find a new source of XP. Especially since our cow farm apparently is riddled with herpes. Over the next few days, I ethically relieved these chickens of their lives, and then very carefully did some mining underground. I desperately needed some extra diamonds to build some more gear, and thankfully I managed to get quite lucky this time, and found some diamonds and was able to get out of there without too much trouble. The ligma disease had been proliferating while I was away though, and upon returning to my fishing spot I found a few degenerates waiting for me nearby. Thankfully I was able to take them down bravely by shooting them in the back. As I needed more leather, when I came across a llama I decided to take it from him. And then it dawned on me. This is the llama that I spared earlier, isn't it? So I killed his whole family, and then came back and finished him off. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, it's better than burdening up the foster care system, I suppose. As much fun as I was having eliminating orphans, though, I was constantly deathly aware of the fact that the parasite infection seems to be getting worse and worse. Pretty much everywhere I looked, there would be some parasite somewhere attacking something. And every time I removed a parasite, another one would come up from underground. It was getting so bad that I basically had to make new arrows every single day, and due to my proximity to the water, if the parasites ever saw me, I would be in big trouble. Nope. Oh no, I'm out of arrows. 
Okay, I'm gonna have to fight him. We have to be very careful. Oh, we got him. It seemed like every time I went swimming around underwater, I noticed a new gaping cavern that has opened up underground. Worst of all though, when I headed home for a cup of tea and a nap, I found out that our villager friend Jeremy has either been eaten or he's managed to escape or something. Either way, he's dead to me. In his honor on day 69, nice, I decided to throw some eggs around and spawn some chickens, which are far better friends than he was anyway. Screw you, Jerome. On day 70, while I was finishing off my wonderful home, I noticed something that didn't make me feel quite right. I don't know if you can see that, but I feel like there's something in the water there. Doesn't look quite right. There. You see? <gasps> what the hell? That is one creepy looking dude. Okay. What the hell was that? I think we're gonna need to hurry up with the fortifications, perhaps. It's wonderful, isn't it? Just as soon as you get used to taking out the flying boys, now all of a sudden, four-legged creatures with cloaking devices turn up. I, I love the parasites. I spent a wonderful next couple of days throwing together my delicious bunker. Look, I even gave it a nice little checkerboard pattern at the top there. Just as I was wrapping up, I noticed a few more neighbors had moved in, and one of them was green for some reason, and that's probably not a good thing. I decided to quickly throw together a little defensive measure here, as the IRS had spotted me and was quick closing on my location. But thankfully, once again, I was able to crisp them up before they were able to get to me. Taxation is theft, people. On day 72, I returned to the exact same spot to find a new group of parasites hanging out and causing mischief. No. No. Uh. Whoa. Oh boy. Where do you think you're going? On day 73, I had a quick check of the durability of my armor, and I swear to god this stuff's made of cardboard. But basically the reality is we have enough diamonds, we just don't have enough XP to enchant it all into armor. So I didn't really want to do this, but we might have to build a mob farm. I was thinking about putting it on those two islands there, but it would cause problems. So I went out into the next chunk, climbed up a hundred blocks, and then threw a quick little thing together. It did take a few days to throw together, but at the end of it we had a quaint little genocide farm. But in the efforts of full transparency, I feel I should mention that the farm actually wasn't working properly. You see this fine young gentleman down here? The zombified man. He should not be there. If I am up here on the mob farm, there should be nothing sporting below me. The reason he is there, aside from him just kind of being a dick, is that I didn't build the mob farm quite high enough. So what this means is that basically the mob farm only works during the day, since the zombies will only really spawn in the farm if the sun is in the sky. In an effort to try and stop Percy the Prick from spawning on the nearby islands, I decided to cover some of them with water, as hopefully this would mean that they can't naturally spawn here. We lost a day to that endeavor, but with the nearby moisturized island, I do think that we increased our XP rates a tiny bit. Now over the next few days I began to realize exactly how desperate my situation is. Every single time without fail that I would leave the mob farm and try to go home, I would be attacked by a group of parasites. These attacks started off as mere nuisances. At this point I was strong enough to be able to fight off Parasite Enderman and the other little guys they bring with them. But quite rapidly my daily exercise of removing parasites near the home became too large of a task to accomplish and I found myself fighting more and more flying and larger parasites every single day. And although I can deal a killing blow extremely quickly against these monsters, they too can do the same. And I'm well aware that soon I'm going to make a mistake and it will probably cause my death. The only hope we really have is getting enough XP to build some really good armor and get some very lucky enchantments. If we don't get this in the next 10 days or so, I am definitely going to die before day 100. On the morning of day 81, I made myself a new pickaxe, as I had a fortune and an advanced efficiency book on hand. This pickaxe hopefully will serve as an emergency digging tool if I ever need it. On day 82, I made myself a new fishing hole right next to the mob farm so I could fish and farm XP at the same time, hopefully doubling my chances of a good enchantment. But sadly, as the days flew by of me whacking the knees of these guys, battering up as many fish as I could, and enchanting my giblets left and right, 
We didn't get any closer to any of our goals, and consistently found ourselves in a worse and worse position to fight off these gigantic monstrosities. Time and time again, regardless of whether it was a small parasite or a big parasite, they would land just a couple of hits each time, which would cause my armor to degrade and eventually entirely break in the middle of a battle. I'm out of... No. My armor broke. This is bad. No. Not the orange ball of death. Yes. He's dead. Don't die. Yes. Okay. We need to get back. Okay, quick durability check. What broke? Oh. Literally everything. Okay! And although I had plenty of spare gear, and some of it even had enchantments, I did not have enough spare gear for this to consistently happen. Every fight, although I got a little better, and even tried to use some strategy from time to time, those damn parasites were quite simply outpacing anything I could accomplish. It was bloody marvelous, I tell you. Every single day, my supplies got lower and lower, and their numbers only seemed to increase. It had become a battle of attrition, and my only real saving grace was that I had a bunker they couldn't get into. Are you sure about that? What? What? Okay, they can get in. Oh my god. What do I do? Do it. I guess I have to get obsidian. Eventually, things got so bad that even as I was standing on my mob farm, the damn parasites wouldn't leave me the hell alone. Let me stand up here, farm XP, and drink tea in peace. Damn you! In fact, things had gotten so bad by day 90 that I was out of all of my good armor and supplies. And so when I woke up that morning and saw a considerably large grouping of weirdos right by my front porch and was subsequently almost killed by a flying twat. Ah. Oh, thank God, burning thorns. I decided now is the time I must head into the mine and find some obsidian. But true to my nature, I procrastinated and found myself back at the top of the mob farm farming XP to try and get another protection enchantment. Listen, I, uh, I just like the jingly sounds when you get XP. It's not my fault. During that day, there had been such a large influx of parasites flying near me that I realized it was probably not even safe for me to return home. And I was contemplating possibly even heading back to the dungeon house because at this point I was completely out of arrows and had no way to fight my way home. I decided that's for squares, however, and instead I figured that as long as I stay deep in the ocean, they won't be able to fly down and find me. But as my geometry teacher, Mr. Wilkins, used to say, Sneeve, you're wrong, go and stand in the corridor. And I found myself being attacked by a flyer while underwater. I narrowly escaped with my life into the house, but I knew I didn't have long. That parasite or something even worse would break through and find me. I intended to go all the way down into the mine, but found it was impossible to do so, which was probably for the best because the parasites were absolutely everywhere at this point. I decided the smartest thing I could probably do would be to fill the tunnels with lava and then bravely run for my life. I was very glad that I'd taken the time to make myself a new pickaxe, as I was definitely able to dig a lot faster than the parasites could. I came across another hentai daddy while in the mines, and made the decision that it's probably a good idea I get to the surface as soon as possible. I didn't know how far I'd travelled from the base, but I knew I was probably far enough to be safe, so it was just a matter of getting back to the sunlight. Though my fragile gamer skin was sizzling like bacon under the hot summer sun, I had done it. I had managed to escape with my life. Unfortunately, though, a quick look at my base says that it's probably no longer habitable. I seem to have contracted a few roommates. Since I had only managed to grab a handful of arrows during my escape, I knew I wouldn't be able to fight those guys. So I decided on a different strategy. A strategy best told through song. Sneeve runs away. He bravely runs away. When danger reared its ugly head, he bravely turned his tail and fled. Oh, brave Sir Robin. Critically low on supplies as I am, I knew I would have to scavenge my basic necessities. I would have to get food from wild animals and enough supplies to be able to last the remaining 10 days. Ah, it's a duck! <laughs> Luckily, since the first animals I came across were sheep, I was able to craft a bed. And during the next morning, I was able to find enough seagulls to replenish my ammo supplies. But as I traveled, I couldn't help but feel a little homesick. I spent so damn long on that base, only to have it stolen from me. I knew I had to return, but I didn't know how I was going to do it. I needed to be stronger than I was, and the opportunity to get powerful enough to go into those tunnels after the parasites is not going to slap us in the face. Ooh, hello, a pyramid. Now, I didn't know it yet, but the infection had been following me. Every time I stopped to do something like loot a pyramid, the parasites would get a little bit closer. And although I found absolutely no loot at the bottom of the pyramid, I was beginning to get a little fired up. 
Those parasites had stolen my home from me, and I wasn't about to take that lying down. Now, I may not have gotten much loot from the pyramid, but we have a few days left. There is still potentially time for us to find what we need in a dungeon or a village. And speaking of dungeons, I had managed to come across quite a nice one here. Now, I knew I didn't have long, so I decided to skip the first few stages and jump right down into level 3. But oh, game, you do love to twist my nipples. Yes, indeed, a blood moon at quite honestly the best possible time. Thank you, game, I love you a lot. But just as I was about to leave the dungeon, I stopped myself. I realized there is a chance due to the blood moon that all the monsters will be spawning on the surface and there will be no monsters spawning underneath, giving me an almost clear shot at all the best chests. And so I quickly rushed deep into the dungeon, gathering everything useful I could. I even managed to find some obsidian, which would be fantastic if we do manage to reclaim our home. Sadly though, as the blood moon ended, we found ourselves in a difficult position. Our helmet had broken, and we were currently wearing an emergency one that had dropped from a mob. This helmet was not going to last much longer, and indeed it did not. I soon found myself on the lowest level in a stalemate with a bunch of shooting skeletons. I could do enough damage for me to survive, but not enough damage for me to advance. And during the stalemate, I had failed to recognize exactly how much durability damage my boots had taken, which soon broke as well. So now I was two crucial armor pieces down and looking a little bit like a hedgehog. I decided to make one final run for the chests in the room that I couldn't get to, and decided to blindly grab what I could and run back. And finally, I'd managed to nab a good enchantment, Infinity. With this, we may even be able to reclaim our home, but first, we've got to get back. We don't have enough iron to put this on our bow right now. Unfortunately though, unknown to me, the Rinky Dink kids were steadily approaching me, and with my armor the way it is, I have almost no hope of survival. However, grabbing a fresh cup of Yorkshire gold, I made my way back through the dungeon, and was lucky enough to be able to spot the parasites before they got too close to me. Once I got to the top floor though, I realized things were not looking good. One of the large summoning parasites has seemingly spawned inside of a water column and there was no way for me to be able to take him down. I had absolutely no choice but to leave and completely abandon the dungeon. There would be no coming back here, that's for certain. I could already hear I was in for a lot of trouble the second I stepped outside and my intuition at this point was getting pretty good. Indeed, things were pretty bad out here. A beckon had apparently spawned during the blood moon and an entire parasite forest had managed to grow. And I knew for certain that it was going to take a lot of jolly rogering to get out of this one. And yes, as I was getting tossed around like a hacky sack at Woodstock, I knew the likelihood of my survival is getting lower and lower as time progresses. I spied a large parasite over the hill there and took a quick pot shot at him, only to be interrupted from behind. He charged me down and I quickly seeking refuge jumped to a nearby island. I was able to get a shot on him and light him aflame only for him to put it out as he crossed the river. And before I could land, a second arrow. Deep down, I think I knew I was screwed for the last 20 days or so. Although I never ventured deep underground to see how bad the infection was near my base, this is how bad things truly were. Like the mold in my shower, things had been left unchecked for far too long. And unfortunately for me, a parasite forest of this size spawns monsters at a rate that is quite literally unstoppable. Just like the apartment I shared with my friends during my second year at university. Alright, well, thank you for watching this video, or I'll see you in the next one. Patrons, I love you. You're all beautiful. Skylar, see you there, you're beautiful. Jeff Hill, thank you. Natrium, your name sounds like a medication. Blarin, yes, great name. Ditch Lizard, that's my favorite so far. Thank you, goodbye.